The Conservative Party of Great Britain. Love them or hate them, they're running the show around here. Their full name, the Conservative and Unionist Party, is something of a mouthful, so most of the time they're simply referred to as the Tories. Now, where exactly does this name stand with the Conservative Party? Do they like it? Will they call themselves it? Or would calling a Conservative a Tory be like calling them a... Hmm, so many words to choose. It's actually kind of both. Former Labour MP David Blunkett said of the matter, I use Tory and Tories to describe our opponents because to me, those terms place them somewhere between backwards looking negative and reactionary. Yet on the other side, Conservative MP Sarah Wollaston said, I use them interchangeably and I don't mind if other people do. If people want to call me a Tory, that's fine. The term Tory dates back to before the Conservative Party were even formed. Tory has origins in the Irish word Tala, which refers to in English as a bandit slash thief. Between 1679 and 1681, during a period of British history known as the Exclusion Crisis, two factions in Parliament had emerged revolving around King Charles II's brother James. He was a Roman Catholic and due to this, some believed he should not have right to the throne after Charles. Those who felt he should still succeed Charles as King became known as the Tories, due to Catholicism linked to Ireland and James even fleeing to the land at one point. The Tories eventually went on to prevail with James becoming King James II. This faction of parliament that supported King James II eventually ceased to exist, but by 1783, a new Tory party had been established and were in power. By 1834, a man named Robert Peel was in control of the party and presented a new manifesto called the Tamworth Manifesto, which put a big divide within the party. One of the factions of this divided Tory party led to the formation of a new party that would eventually become the modern Conservative Party of Great Britain, with many historians agreeing that the Tamworth Manifesto laid down the principles of which the modern party is Based. Hey Patrick, not bad so far. Oh, hey Will, what are you doing here? Well hey, I, I couldn't help but overhear you were talking about politics and conservative nicknames. Listen, did you know that the main conservative party of my country has a pretty interesting nickname as well? Oh, you're talking about how the Republicans are known as the GOP, right? Fancy having a go at a name explain yourself? Well, a nickname explain at least. I'm sure I can, but if it's alright with you, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it my way. If you know anything about American history, you know that race has always been a challenging and difficult part of it. From the writing of our Constitution in 1787 until the start of the American Civil War in 1861, the issue of slavery was a slow boiling issue. Knowing that a direct confrontation of the issue, or abolishment of slavery through legislation, would almost certainly lead to outright war between the slaveholding southern states and the mostly free northern states, early American lawmakers tried to maintain a balance in our legislature, our Congress, and Senate between pro-slavery and anti-slavery factions. As new states were added to the Union, a series of compromises were used to tactically maintain a mathematical balance between new free states and new slave states, assuring that neither side would be able to impose their will on the other in the federal legislature. Now what did the Republicans and their nickname have to do with all this? To find out, let's go a little bit deeper with this topic. In 1854, the Kansas-Nebraska Act passed the U.S. Congress. The law stipulated that as the Nebraska and Kansas territories became part of the Union, the populations would be able to decide for themselves if they wanted slavery or not. But precedent said that the dividing line of slave states and free states was the 36-30 parallel, and so the potential expansion of slavery was seen as an aggressive move by many Northerners. A coalition of those opposing the Kansas-Nebraska Act formed a new political party. At a schoolhouse meeting in Ripon, Wisconsin, Local opposition to the Kansas-Nebraska Act suggested the name Republican. Later, in a June 1854 editorial, writer Horace Greeley wrote of the new party, We think some simple name like Republican would more fitly designate those who had united to restore the Union to its true mission of champion and promulgator of liberty rather than propagandist of slavery. The new Republican Party elected its first president in 1860. As for their new nickname, GOP, which stands for Grand Old Party, that arrived later. The Republican National Committee dates the acronym to 1875 originally meaning gallant old party. Popularization of the term is credited to the Chicago Tribune, which used the grand old party label in an editorial celebrating the return of the Republicans to power in 1888. Let us be thankful that under the rule of the grand old party, these United States will resume the onward and upward march. Thanks for clearing that up for us, Will. 
You know, if you enjoyed that, then why not head over to Will's channel, Political Junkie News. He has fantastic content covering political history to current affairs. You might even spot myself in one of his videos. Whatever you choose to do next though, at least you now know how the right-wing parties of mine and Will's countries got their bizarre nicknames.